Remember me? I was that nice little girl in Pollyanna. And the terrible twins in the parent trap. And this was our house in that darn cat. And my name is Haley Mills. Well, <laughs> I guess I have matured a little. Well, I'm back at Disney Studios to read for the part of Island We in the Black Cauldron. As it turns out, the Black Cauldron is an animated feature. They don't want all five foot four of me, they just want my voice. Before starting the animation for the Black Cauldron, layout artist Don Griffith has to decide how the characters will move within a scene. Oh, the quick cuts are better art because that'll give you excitement and it'll uh, make the thing move. He functions like a camera, designing all the different angles, the close-ups, and long shots that give the flat, two-dimensional drawings a feeling of depth. Then, background artist Jim Coleman brings these layout drawings to life by creating a world for the characters to inhabit, a place for them to live and move in. By this stage, the story outline has been decided on. And here's where I come in. They're searching for the right voices for the various characters. So before reading for the part of Island Me, I met the men who created her. And they helped me to understand her. Well, she's a princess. But we think that she has characteristics that are going to make her different from the others that we've done in the past. And, uh, well, you can you see it here on the... Uh... Model. I can see that they're both the same girl, but they're, it's like they're different aspects of the same girl. Yes, uh, Ellen Lee has a very spunky quality, but at the same time, she's very charming and very appealing. And she, she seems very sure of herself, too. Oh, yeah. And she seems quite cross as if she's ticking him off. That's right, right. So, Island Lee and Terrence come from very, very different backgrounds. She's a princess, and he's a farm boy. He's an assistant pig keeper to this little character right here, little Henwin. Oh, he's... Oh, he's absolutely enchanting. Now, who does he remind me of? Me. <laughs> That's good, no, that because she's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the role we had in mind. <laughs> Animation is a continuing process. The young artists of today can draw from the wealth of past experience and bring their own contributions to new projects, like the Black Cauldron. Although Walt Disney didn't invent animation, he and his artists elevated it to a level unparalleled in the world of film. Today, dedicated young artists ensure that the rich legacy that he left will continue to enchant and entertain us. The Black Cauldron has been in the works for three years and is scheduled to be released in 1985. The producer, Joe Hale, has been involved with animation for over 30 years and he's agreed to give us a crash course on the makings of an animated film and all the accompanying problems. So, where do you start, Joe? The place to start with an animated feature, of course, is with the story. Uh, in the case of The Black Cauldron, we started with five books and had to condense them down into one. Uh, primarily, it's based on The Black Cauldron. And these books are from the uh, Chronicles of Perdain by Lloyd Alexander. Uh, one of our problems was that there were so many characters and so much story that it was kind of a case of uh, taking all of this material and condensing it into uh, one story that we could put on the screen. And of course, the thing that I always look for in an animated uh, film is to try to do a, a story that can't be done any other way. For instance, uh, Bambi or uh, 101 Dalmatians or Lady and the Tramp could only be done in animation. I always feel that if you can do it with real actors, then that's really the way you should do it. Uh, once we get the uh, story written, in narrative form, then we start breaking it down into story sketches, and we put that on uh, four by eight storyboards, and we write the story the way you, uh, you would write a comic strip. Once the storyboard has been approved, 
then we uh, bring it, we start looking for voices, uh, our voice talents. And in the case of the Black Cauldron, uh, we have people not only from this country, like Jonathan Winters, who does King Eidelig. Uh, we use John Hurt. Uh, most of our talent comes from England because we felt that that would give it more of a classic uh, feeling because the, the stories are based on a Welsh fairy tale. And uh, usually we uh, will try to find a, a, the right voice for the character, and then in many cases then we redesign the character to fit the voice, if it's a particularly uh, good voice. Then we cut the voices in opposite those sketches, and so we can run a complete sequence with just story sketches and hear the voices played against those sketches. We start doing our rough animation. The animator comes up, he talks with the director, they discuss the scene, they, sometimes they will act it out. Uh, the director tells the animator exactly what he wants to see on the screen. We see Creeper here on the steps, right at the foot of the steps here with the king, and he gets excited as what's happening, and he's building up this attitude and this expression, he's enjoying it. <laughs> because he's seen the vision, the vision started to form in the water, and, and so he's, he's going crazy, so he's, he's excited, yeah, he's, he's overwhelmed. overwhelmed. He'd be jumping up and down, jumping up and down, like, you know, clapping, his hands. clapping his hands, going, look, 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 it's the dark, something like that? Absolutely right. right. Let's go for it. Right. The animator then takes the scene, and he animates the character very roughly. Then that is brought up to the director, the director looks at the scene, and if he approves it, the animator's assistant cleans up that scene in one fine pencil line so that it can be Xeroxed onto a cell. After the drawings are cleaned up, they go to the ink and paint department, where they're Xeroxed onto clear cells and painted on the back. At the same time this is going on, the background department is painting the background in full color. The uh, colored cells and the painted background then go to production camera where they are shot in color. Presently we have, uh, I believe, 111 animators and assistants working on the Black Cauldron. When the film gets into ink and paint, there will probably be maybe 250 people involved. And that's all there is to it. It may sound complicated, but it really isn't. Is that you, Hen? Look what I've got. Come on out. Here's a lovely, juicy apple. <laughs> oh, great prince. Jake pours down in goody munchings and crunchies. Nice apple. Good prince. Good apple. Oh, boy. What a juicy apple. Bleed it up for dirt. Bleed it up for dirt. Hey, no you don't. I didn't give you that apple. You took it. Ow! Hey, hold on you hairy little thief. Come back with my apple. If you don't give it back, you'll be sorry. I mean it. I'm warning you. Give it back. Come on, the apple. Where is it? Uh-uh. Don't you not know where they are? Uh-oh. Give it back. I warn you. Come on. Uh -oh. Let's take a little breather. A tradition that continues in their newest animated feature, The Black Cauldron. This sword and sorcery adventure fantasy not only features some way out characters, but some pretty way out voices, including John Viner's voice creation for Gergi. I was shown the storyboard, or as much as they had, uh, about this lovable little character who always liked to eat and uh, would do anything, you know, to get what he wanted to. And, and he sounded like a, a fun guy, you know, so I just added a little bit of, uh, I guess you'd call it a child's uh, inflection on, on what he had to say, rather than say, uh, uh, 
I want some munchies and crunchies because I'm very hungry. Okay, I said. I like the munchies and crunchies because I'm very hungry. I said, yeah. So, that's the way it is because she's a little younger, that's all. Oh, poor miserable turkey deserves fierce smackings and whackings on his poor tender head. I was left with no munchings and crunchies. Black Cauldron's sinister villain, the Horned King, called for a voice dripping with evil. The call was answered by British actor John Hurt. They wanted me to do that part. Um, it's, 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 it's often a certain amount of amusement for an actor as to why you get chosen for a part. And he was such a loathsome creature. I, I, I um, believe that... Um, I don't know, I seem to dredge a voice from somewhere, from the bowels of the earth, I think, was the general idea. I presume, my boy, you are the keeper of this oracular pig. It was very hard to speak, if you see what I mean. It was all dredged from somewhere. The Black Cauldron. Oh, it does I love the characters. They've been part of my life. I mean, Bambi and Thumper and go on and on and on. I mean, for what it did to me or for me as a child, I can only hope that something like that will happen to somebody else from what I've done. I mean, I sat there and I cried and I, I sat there and I laughed and I felt joy. And, and I knew that everybody in the world could feel the same thing from the same thing that was happening on the screen.